program created by the Rio Grande Oil Company. Long Beach Police calling all cars. Attention all cars of broadcast 68. The bank holdup. Suspect age 42. Height 6 feet. Weight 200 pounds. Red hair. Light accent. This man is armed. Watch the step, boys. That is all. I would like to read a telegram just received from the head of the Rio Grande Gasoline Refinery. He says, we technical men at the refinery appreciate your truthful advertising of Rio Grande cracked gasoline. We are glad to testify that gasoline made by the Sinclair cracking process will more than live up to any claims you make in advertising. Signed, William Murray, superintendent of Rio Grande cracking plant, Vinvale, California. Well, the only claim I've ever heard Rio Grande make is that uh, cracked gasoline is used in more police cars and emergency equipment wherever it's sold than any other brand. That claim is absolutely true. And where in the world could you find a better test for your gasoline? Police cars meet the same daily driving conditions that you do and meet emergencies besides. So the gasoline that performs best in police cars is obviously the best buy for motors. Sure, but I should think that cities would specify a higher quality gasoline than service station sells. That's true. Cities do have rigid specifications for the gasoline that's used in their police cars. Many gasolines don't equal these specifications. But Rio Grande Crack exceeds every specification. It's better than the law requires. That's why so many cities have selected Rio Grande above all others to power their finest, costliest cars. Well, that sounds like it might be too expensive for my car. It doesn't cost you one cent more to buy the same Rio Grande cracked gasoline that is specified by so many cities. Every time you fill up from a Rio Grande cracked gasoline pump, you get exactly the same gasoline that police cars use. And you get a better gasoline than you pay for because Rio Grande's patented cracking process adds qualities you can't get in any other gasoline. And now it is our pleasure to introduce Detective Sergeant A. H. Wombacher of the Long Beach Police Department. Sergeant Wombacher. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is a pleasure to appear on this great radio program, which for the past year and a half has done so much to acquaint the citizens of the, of the West with the problems and accomplishments of their police officers. Our story tonight concerns the activities of a daring daylight bank robber whose depredations extended up and down the Pacific coast from Mexico to Canada. He was a difficult man with whom to deal, educated, cultured, intelligent. He was a greater problem than the ordinary gutter type of crook. So suave and smooth was his manner that he managed to keep his innocent bride in complete ignorance of the real source of his income. But in the end, he, like every lawbreaker, found that crime does not pay.
beautiful, beautiful. Maybe tell you how I feel, how much I love you. Oh, darling, so will you marry me? Oh, 
you have to do for this? Oh, nothing much. I go through all the talk up to Los Angeles for you. But it doesn't seem possible. There's money and bootlegging, my son is there. Please, sir. Your hair's right around the edges. Why is that? Oh, oh that? <laughs> I just died at that way so it would look as though I was a redhead when I had my hat off. Now, look. See it? Why must you do that? So no one will recognize me again. Now I must use these clippers and cut off the red hair. And here. Here. Over here. And more. There. Now, see? <laughs> I'm a blonde again. Is well, that much being? No, but one must be careful. How oh, would you wouldn't? Oh, don't worry. I won't do it again. If this money, we can set up a little shop. Oh, I would like that. Sure. And then we won't have anything to worry about. Now, listen, Danica. I want you to put this money in the shoebox here and take it over to the hotel in Rizondo Beach. Leave it in the cupboard in our room. Why? Because I don't want anyone to see me. I'm going up to Rudolph in Huntington Park. Now, after you come back from Rizondo, check out of this room and bring your bags to Rudolph. Well, it sounds all very strange. Don't question me, Tanya. Think of this, my dear. In a couple of weeks, we'll be in San Francisco and we'll have our own place. Now do as I say. Very well, Grace Walker. Listen, the siren. I wonder what's the matter. Oh, probably the police are going up to that bank down at the corner. Why, what's happening? Oh, I don't know. There were a bunch of people around there when I came in. Another hold up, I suppose. <laughs> While Domsinski busies himself clipping his saggy side lock, Sergeant Joe McClellan has arrived at the bank and is questioning the frightened employees. Now, what does this man look like? Well, he's a 7 feet tall. He is. Right he is. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Not all at once. Are you, ma'am, can you describe this man? Yes. He was a big fella, and, and I was just standing at Mr. Martin's window getting some shopping money. They're running his trail down to Martin. Yes, yes. My wife told me all about that this morning. Now, what did the man look like? Oh, oh, yes, of course. Uh, he was a big man, of course. Yes, I heard you. And, and he had red hair. And he said that the police would never get him alive. Big man, red hair, said the police would never get him alive, huh? I think I know this fellow. Now, let me get a look at that face. Say, who smoked this cigar? Hey, why, uh, I did. He, uh, he stuck it in my mouth. Who stuck it in your mouth? Oh, the, the, the robber uh, told me to uh, smoke it and uh, get up my nerves to open the safe. And you smoked it? Yes, and then uh, after I opened the safe, he uh, pushed me back into the cage. I just the cigar fell out of my, out of my mouth. <laughs> did he get you this cigar? Yeah, uh, stuck it in my mouth. Oh, uh, most of flora. What are you wrapping that dirty thing up for, Sergeant? Well, you never can tell what might be important, ma'am. Not any fingerprints here. Uh, oh, no, no, he, uh, he wore a glove. Sure, but he got smart once too often. The lone wolf has left a clue. Yeah, yeah, but there are probably a thousand men in Long Beach who smoke the uh, same kind of cigars. Sure, but you never can tell. This cigar butt might lead me to the right one. Back in headquarters, McCullen checked up with Detective E.L. Woodruff. Well, Joe, what did you discover? Well, we stopped every highway and streetcar line out of town, Woody. He meant he didn't get out of Long Beach. Well, I know who he is. You know? Yep. He's the guy we call the Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf? Sure. That bird has been holding up all these banks. The guy that always boasts he won't be taken alive. Sure, I remember the guy. He described as a big guy with red hair. Yeah, that's the one. At least we could knock him over. He's wanted all of them down the coast. Yeah, I know he is. Well, I got a hunch about him. Yeah, what's that? Well, you've bottled up the highways and the streetcar lines out of town. He hasn't left, has he? Oh, well, sure of that. Okay, then he's still in town. Yeah, but where? That's where my hunch comes in. I think he's hiding in some rooming house right near the bank. Why? Oh, I don't know why, but that's the way I feel about it. You want to look over the neighborhood with me? Sure. Come on. Well, this street's as good as any to start on. The bank's there on the corner. Oh, this first house here has room for Aunt Stein in the window. I'll go in there, Woody, and you start on the other side of the street. If either of us gets a bite, we'll let the other one know. Okay? Okay. Good luck. What is it? You rent room? Yes, I have one for rent. Does a big man with red hair room with you? No. Why? Well, do you know of a big man with red hair in the neighborhood? Oh, I'm sorry, I don't. Why do you ask? 
Uh, he's a friend of mine. Well, he's not here. Uh, thank you very much.
May I count upon your honor as an officer and a gentleman? Naturally. You will keep this confidential. As far as duty permits. As you can see, I have no connection with any investigation you're making. And this is it's a personal matter, a very personal matter. Nevertheless, I must insist you tell me what this key opens. I think this key to the apartment of a friend of my husband, who has become a very good friend of mine. I couldn't help it. It just happened. Since my husband, well, to know it would make me terribly jealous. He might, he might do anything to me. And he's a friend of ours. I see. Well, Mrs. Stanley, that's your problem, not ours. And certainly we haven't the time to interfere in your domestic problem. Oh, thank you. I trust you'll forgive our detaining you. Of course. I may go then. Very shortly. The matron will make you comfortable. But why? Just a routine matter of checking up on your identity. Oh. Take Mrs. Stanley away, Mrs. Sullivan. Oh, but, but... And treat her with every consideration. Yes, sir. But you said... It'll only be a matter of a couple of hours, Mrs. Stanley. Oh, but you mustn't. You can't. Come along, ma'am, and quietly, please. Yeah, you crazy, Max. You don't look plausible, sir. Uh, too plausible. I'm going to check up on it. What's your she, Max? Everything else she told me may have been the truth, but she lied once. When was that? When she said she was French. Her accent is Russian. That doesn't prove anything. Uh, maybe not. But our big man with the red hair had an accent, and he smoked an Osa Flora cigars. This woman has an accent, and she carried a box of an Osa Flora cigars in her bag and a key in her shoe. Come on, Woody. Um... What are we going to do now? We're going to try to find the hotel this key belongs to. You may spend a couple of years trying to do that. Okay, but partner, there's something smelly in this case besides the brand of cigars. Come on. At rooming houses, at small hotels, at large hotels, at locksmiths and hardware stores, the two detectives inquire for information regarding the mysterious key. The day slowly passes in futile, fruitless searching. And then, early in the evening, discouraged, they enter a small hotel on the pike. Yes, sir, gentlemen. Like a nice room looking out over the ocean? No, not tonight. We're from orders. Oh, I see. Well, what can I do for you? Do you use a key like this here? No. No, our keys have metal tags on them like this, see? Well, have you any idea where this key might come from? Let me look at it. Oh, sure, I know where it's from. You do? Where? Why, well, the beach house of Redondo. I worked there last summer. That's one of their keys. The beach house of Redondo, huh? Okay, buddy, thanks. Come on, Woody. Accelerated to the floor, Byron open wide. McCullen and Woodruff streak northward to Redondo Beach. At the beach house, they interview the manager. Is uh, this one of your keys? Yeah, why? Who's it belong to? What do you want to know for? Who are you? McClellan of the Long Beach Police Department. Well, you must be on the wrong track. Folks who occupy that room aren't the kind of people police are looking for. Well, who does occupy the room? And his wife by the name of Domchinsky. Domchinsky, huh? Russian? Uh, might be, I guess. Do they have an accent? Yeah, I think they do. Well, you see, Woody, it all fits. Yeah, so far. Well, they're fine people. The man's a musician. Plays a violin. They are just in New York on a vacation. Well, the story changes. They're from New York this time, Woody. Are these people in? No, oh, I don't know. Uh, ring their room. If they answer, give them some alibi. Say you made a mistake or something. But look here, these folks are on the level. Ring their room. We haven't any time to waste. Oh, very well. Yeah, no answer. We'll go up. Now look here, I object to my guests being annoyed. Now listen, you've been in this game long enough to know better than to interfere with the police investigation. Now you sit tight, and if these people come in, you ring us and let us know. Oh, very well. Is the elevator running? Yeah. Well, looks pretty good, Woody. Yeah, but I'm not convinced yet. I don't believe in circumstantial evidence. Hang too many innocent people. Yeah, now, hold your horses, partner. You can never tell what sort of evidence we might turn up. Well, here we are. Well, where's 717? Right here, across the hall. Fine. Hear anything? No. I'll get you gun out and let's go visiting then. Right. I open the door, you cover the room, and I'll snap on the light. Right. Well, nobody home. Now well, let's take a look around. Nothing in this drawer with some playing cards. Here's a violin case and a table. Open it up. Yeah. Nothing but a violin. What'd you expect to find a harp? 
Hey, what's the big idea? I'd just seen if I could play it. See, things aren't strung like ukulele. Yeah, I wouldn't know. Hey, take a look in that closet, will you? Yeah. A lot of clothes. A pair of shoes. Hey, what's this on the shelf? It's like a hat box to me. He's still my quivering hunt. Hey, can you reach it, Woody? No. You're a little taller. You try it. Oh, it's a mighty high closet. you got to stretch up here. Hey, look out, Mac. It's falling. Well, Woody, yeah. what do you think of my hunt now? I guess you're right. Just as though this was the entire hole from the bank. Now, let's count it. Here's 500. Yeah, here's three packages of $1,000 apiece. The bank's wrapper's still on them. Yeah. Let's see. And four more. Yeah. 15, 20, 22, 22,523. Yeah, here's six grand more. That's it. Every penny of it. $29,000. Yeah, but we haven't got the lone wolf yet. If our luck lasts, we will. Let's go. We need now to stake out on this spot. Yeah, the boys here in Redondo Beach will help us on that. You got that, Bill? Right here under my arm. Oh, well, well, maybe this wise guy will believe us. Well, boys, any luck? Yeah, $29,000 worth. What? Yeah, stones for Long Beach Bank today. Yeah, stick it in your safe. Why, I can't understand. Why, why Mr. Domzinski seems to be such a... Yeah, player. I know, they usually do. Any mail in his box? Yeah, yeah, a letter came for him today. Let me see it. There you are. Oh, Igor Domshinsky. Been sent to an address in Huntington Park and forwarded here. Uh-huh. Nothing important, Mac? No, but apparently our man's a good friend of the people in Huntington Park. This bird that's writing the letter sends best regards to Rudolph and his family. Yeah, our next call's in Huntington Park, then. Right. Hey, what do you want me to do with this money? Uh, keep it in your safe. We'll be back for it. And if Domshinsky comes in, uh, don't say anything about us being here. In a few minutes, some officers will be here to wait for him. Uh, very well. But I can't believe that the fine man has used such an awful thing. Again, the two officers scream through the night in their high-powered police car. And as they decimate the distance separating Redondo Beach and Huntington Park, Chief Yancey of Long Beach and the shotgun squad, warned by McClellan, is also heading for the Huntington Park address. It is close to midnight when the two officers quietly approach the house. An old man is seated, breathing in the front room. McClellan taps gently at the door, fearing to sound a general alarm by ringing the bell. A moment later, the old man answers the door. Is Mr. Domsinski here? Right. Yeah. But he's asleep. We're police officers. Police officers, while. The house is surrounded. It does not make any noise. But what do the police want with my friend Grigor? Your friend Grigor is a notorious bank robber. Oh, there must be some mistake. I'm sure he isn't a man. Well, we're positive he is. A room, Jim. Right at the head of the stairs. Let's go, boys. And be ready for anything. This guy's tough. Hey, the door is open. Yeah. There he is. The moon shining right across the bed. It's on the light. Come on, Dalkinski. Wake up. Uh, uh, You're under arrest. Why, you... Keep your hands away from that fellow. I'll empty this shotgun get into you. Step the cuffs on him, Tom. Uh, all right. Don't got me. What you got under the pillow, Woody? Uh, a lead pipe and a forty-five. Uh, well, Dalkinski, I thought you said we'd never take you alive. I didn't intend you should. <laughs> That's all part of the game, I guess. <laughs> and I was going to go straight. This was going to be my last job. <laughs> Don't worry about that, Domsinski. It will be your last job for a long, long time. Domsinski confessed and pled guilty and was sentenced to serve 40 years in San Quentin Penitentiary. Should he ever be paroled, he faces trial and possible conviction in the state of Washington for a bank holdup in Seattle. His poor misled bride was quickly released from jail, heartbroken and disillusioned at the revelation that her husband was a bank robber. 
out of deference to her feelings, wherever she may now be. In tonight's broadcast, we have referred to her and her husband by fictitious names. The story you have heard tonight is true. These weekly dramatizations are based upon facts obtained by Rio Grande investigators from confidential police files. Because Rio Grande provides the cracked gasoline which powers police cars in so many large western cities, we are in close touch with police work. Tonight, Rio Grande has entertained you. Tomorrow, Rio Grande will thrill you. Just fill your tank with cracked gasoline, and Rio Grande will give you police car performance in your own car. Long Beach Police calling all cars. Attention all cars. The cancellation of broadcast 68 regarding a bank holdup. The suspect in this case is now in custody. That is all. Thank <laughs> you.